So you've just coughed up two grand on Samsung's new foldy up phone and you're staring at it like what can this flexible bugger actually do then? Well, you've clicked on the right video, boy crikey, good for you, because your uncle Spurt is about to bang on about some of the best features of Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold 6 and show you how to set up and get the most from this bendy blower. Full review coming soon, and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So let's begin with some Galaxy Z Fold 6 basics. Now, first of all, you might notice that my cover screen and my internal screen are very different. Different wallpapers, widgets, app shortcuts, the works. And this is because if you dive into home screen settings, I've got cover screen mirroring turned off. And with this knocked off, you can set up that internal desktop however you like, and it won't affect your cover screen and vice versa. I prefer it this way, but if you'd like a bit of symmetry between your Z Fold 6's internal and external displays, just switch that on. And now when we unfurl this mega beast, you'll see that the apps and the widgets and everything mimic that cover screen. Because you can still set a separate wallpaper for each. So basically when the phone is unfurled, if you go into the wallpaper and style section of the settings, select whichever paper you would like, hit done. You can then assign it to the lock screen and the home screen of the internal display. Get it all framed up just the way you like it and then hit done. This will only be applied to your internal display when you swap to that external cover screen. As you can see, it's the original paper. You can then do the same, go to settings, inside wallpaper, select what paper you want, get it all framed up again, and then once again, hit done, and boom, there you go. We've now got awesome geeky anime wallpapers on both the cover screen and the internal panel. Now there's another setting well worth exploring here on the Galaxy Z Fold 6. We head into the display section of the settings, scroll all the way down until continue apps on cover screen. And here we can select any apps that we want to continue displaying on that cover screen when we close up the phone rather than it hibernating. So I'm going to turn this on for YouTube say. Now if I'm running any other app here on the internal display and I close up the Galaxy Z Fold 6, it will hibernate. But now if I attempt the same with YouTube running, it'll be like, nah bruv, I'm going to keep on going. And you can keep on watching your awesome techie nerdy video right there on the cover screen. And if you're used to one of Samsung's Galaxy Z Foldy jobbies, we'll be well acquainted with the Wii Dock which pops up at the bottom when you are in an app. This can be hidden from view at any point just by long pressing down here at the bottom of the screen and you can pop it up just as quickly and easily. It is worth keeping around though because you can happily multitask with this bad boy. Just drag an app icon wherever you want on screen in order to open up a bit of split screen multitasking. And if you drop it in a place that you don't particularly like, well no worries, you can pick it up and drag it and drop it somewhere else instead. You can also resize the apps like so with a quick drag of that dividing line. And you can also tap those three dots in the middle in order to swap the apps around or reorientate them, if that's the correct word. And hey, why stop at just two apps? Why not drag a third on there as well? So we can listen to a bit of shouty punk while also browsing the internet and watching some bald YouTube twat. And in that dock, you can actually customize which apps appear on this left-hand side here. So chuck some of your favorites in there. For instance, let's hoi a bit of Curve in there. And then you'll see when we go into the browser, Curve has now appeared there. The apps on the right here are some of your most recently accessed apps in case you want to jump straight back into them. And if you want to, you can bring up all of the apps with a quick tap of this nine dot icon here. But all of this is completely customizable. Just jump on into the settings, go back into display and then tap the task bar. In here, you can see show recent apps is active. If we knock that off, that section disappears entirely. And you can also change how many apps are displayed up to three or up to four. Something else that's certainly worth your time here on the Galaxy Z Fold 6 is hidden away in advanced features. It's the flex mode panel. Now see, I'm watching some barely coherent YouTube tech video and I do a bit of this. You'll see that the screen splits in two. Automatically, the picture bit goes into the top half and down below, you've now got media controls. So you can quickly pause and play your video, skip forward and back 10 seconds. You've actually got a proper timeline if you want to skim through it as well. Not to mention some bonus features over here on the left edge. So you can quickly load up another app on that bottom half instead of the media controls for a bit of multitasking. You can quickly and easily take a screenshot at any point. Or you can also bring up a mini touchpad as well, which isn't particularly helpful in YouTube, of course, but can be for some other apps. And if you tap the three dots down at the bottom there, you can also quickly bring up display settings and a bit of a volume slider too. 
You can manually activate the flex mode panel by tapping the Wii icon which appears when you fold up the phone like that. Otherwise, if you dive on into the flex mode panel settings, you can actually have it automatically show up for certain apps, including the likes of Netflix, YouTube, etc. Of course, this Galaxy Z Fold 6 tips and tricks guide would be most amiss if I didn't bang on a great length about the various Galaxy AI features which Samsung has tucked away onto this bad boy. Probably very aware of some of these from the many, many adverts which are playing right now. And the good news is they're easier to access than ever before because Samsung's got a dedicated Galaxy AI section in the settings menu now. Got most of those AI features tucked away in here and also towards the bottom you'll see the process data only on device setting. If you select that then the Galaxy Z Fold 6 won't go online with any of your AI related requests. Although this feature is required for some of the more advanced stuff. One of the most popular AI tools on Samsung's Galaxy phones is the circle to search. So basically just long press the little navigation bar down here until the screen turns of sort of bluey haze and then just draw around whatever you want to search for and Google image search will immediately pop up. I found that the search can be a bit haphazard when it comes to searching for faces but generally things like movie images and stills are fine. And if you happen to find yourself in a foreign land and like myself you are a monolingual monolingual I can't even speak one bloody language. You're struggling to make yourself understood. Well, no worries. Just drag down that notifications bar and tap interpreter. You then select whichever language it is you speak. In my case, just about English. And you've got a variety of alternative languages that you can have you translated into. If you hit add languages, then you've got a few more options chucked in there as well. Quite a few different languages supported these days. Then you just tap the mic button when you're ready to speak. You'll see the translation pop up in the other half of the display and more usefully on the cover screen of the phone. So all you need to do is basically just aim this thing at whoever you're trying to talk with. Your words will pop up in their local language. And then when they reply, the English translation will pop up right there on your screen. So never again will you suffer the ignominy of ordering a pint of beer and being handed some filthy soft drink by mistake. And of course, we're all very busy people these days. Lots of stuff to do, including browsing TikTok for three hours a day. So sometimes you don't have time to read an entire article that's, you know, maybe 400, 500 words. Psh. So what you can do in the Samsung internet browser instead is tap this wee icon down below and tap summarize. This will then pick out some of the main points of the article and present them in a bullet point fashion so you can read them within about sort of 20 seconds. It's not perfect by any means, sometimes missing out some pretty major points, but it's pretty good if you are very tight on time indeed. And hey, suck at art? Well, no worries. Why spend many years learning to paint like Picasso when you can just spunk out some half-assed crap and get your Z Fold 6 to transform it into something that doesn't look like a creepy picture that some sinister child drew in a f***ing horror film? You can access the drawn assistant at any point just by dragging out the old sidebar like so and tapping this icon up at the top. You've got lots of different options here, including illustrations, sketches, pop art. Let's try a bit of that. Tres bien, as the French would say. And as you can see, they're all marked with a wee watermark down at the bottom saying AI generated content just to prove that it wasn't actually your skill or flair at all that did this. And there's plenty of other AI shenanigans built into the Z Fold 6 as well, including Chat Assist, which is part of the Samsung keyboard. And this can basically reply to messages on your behalf if you can't be bothered to put down your Fortnite game for 10 seconds to respond to loved ones who dearly miss you. And quite a handy one for students and anyone who's in a lot of meetings as well. If you get the voice recorder on the go, this can transcribe and translate anything that's said. And also again provide a brief summary at the end, which again sometimes misses out some of the big points. But it's quite handy to have as a little gentle reminder of what people actually banged on about. And you can also get AI to generate you a wallpaper if you don't want to set it as one of your family members or just download some nerdy anime shenanigans like I do. All you do is you just tap these different options and select whatever you feel like and then hit generate and boom whatever you asked for is generally kind of presented. Now let's shift away from AI for a bit. We will return to it before the end of this tips and tricks video so I can bang on about photo editing stuff because One UI is absolutely packed full of fantastic features, many of which I've banged on about before in these previous Samsung tips and tricks guides. So for instance, connected devices. In there you will find good old Samsung DeX. This allows you to connect to an external monitor either wirelessly or via a cable for a proper big screen experience on the fly. So I'm just going to connect my Samsung Tele 
It's got to hit allow on the TV and then the two will pair up. And as you can see there, we've now got a desktop on the telly and the phone itself turns into a touchpad so we can move that cursor around. We can load up any app that's right here on our Galaxy Z Fold 6. So we can continue working on a document, we can stream a video, do basically whatever the bloody hell we want. It's a powerful tool, there's quite a lot you can do with it. I won't bang on about it now because I could do an entire 20 minute how-to video just about Dex. And indeed there's loads of great how-tos on YouTube, so just go check one of those out if you want to know more. Another feature I really like here in the Samsung internet browser is the fact that you can continue to play videos or whatever else you're enjoying when you hibernate the phone. All you need to do is tap up here and go to settings, scroll on down to useful features and then you'll find the background play option in there. Now if we bump up the volume and then minimize the app. Notifications bell, cheers get some serious pangs of nostalgia of adapter action or anything like that. And as you can hear, you can still hibernate the phone and continue to enjoy that hot content. It's particularly handy if you're just streaming, see a podcast on good old YouTube, something along those lines. You pop back in, it'll still be playing quite happily. And because the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6's battery life isn't exactly fantastic, I would say make yourself familiar with the battery menu, especially app issue history, which pops up here. As you can see, this will show you any issues that are happening with apps draining the battery unnecessarily in the background. You can just give them a poke and they will enjoy a good bit of kip and stop draining your precious juice. There's a few other worthy features in here as well, including battery protection. If you want to keep that battery life as good as possible for the long haul, you'll want to stick that on at least adaptive. This will learn your sleeping habits and basically if you're plugging in the Z Fold 6 while you're asleep, which I'd imagine the majority of people will do, it will try and prevent overcharging. I certainly wouldn't recommend sticking it on the maximum level as that will completely stop charging when the battery hits 80% and let's face it, 100% charge will just about get me through more stairs. And now let's turn our attention to the camera tech here on the Galaxy Z Fold 6. You can quick load the camera app with a quick double tap of that power button as usual. Bonjour. But you shouldn't have to worry about using the selfie cameras either on the internal or the external display when you want to shoot your mug because they're not fantastic. Why don't we just use the main camera? So when you're in the camera app, just turn on the cover screen preview with a quick tap of this wee icon up here. And then if we turn it around, there we are. As you can see, they're using the cover screen as a preview window and then just swipe this wee padlock. As you can see, all the camera controls will pop up on the cover screen. You can swap to a bit of portrait mode action, see? And then just flash a palm and the countdown will start. And there is my pant dropping the awesome selfie, one absolutely ready for the Instas. You can also shoot a good bit of video in this mode, of course, whatever you, you fancy doing. But what about editing our pics if they're not maybe quite as amazing as we hoped? Well, if you swipe up in the gallery on any photo, you'll get a bunch of different options pop up down below. So we could maybe say get a bit of background blur on the go. You can of course tweak the effect so it's as strong or as weak as you want. You've also got your generative AI tools if you tap these wee star icons down below as well. So see I want to get rid of my lapel mic. All I need to do is basically just roughly draw around it. It'll then be selected in the photo. I can then long press on it and just tap this wee razor icon and it will be eliminated from existence. Just tap generate. And it doesn't always work perfectly, unfortunately. As you can see there, remnants of it are still there. Kind of looks like some really weird chest hair action going on there. But you get the bloody idea. You can also press on stuff and then resize it if you want to make it bigger, smaller, whatever you fancy. And also in that gallery app, you can simply long press on absolutely any person, object, animal, and you can turn it instantly into a sticker. It tends to work really, really well. You can also apply various filters to it. And the Portrait Studio tool is also good for a giggle. Once again, just tap that generator button inside of the gallery and Portrait Studio will pop up if a face is detected. You can then turn yourself into a comic book character, a 3D cartoon. Sometimes it's kind and gives me a wee bit of hair. Or if you want to add something to your photo, well again, just tap that generative AI button and then this time tap sketch to image. You can add in whatever you fancy. In this case, I am actually going to give myself some hair. Screw it. Some lovely curly locks. Generate. And uh, <laughs> it's not quite what I imagined. Me as part of some really crap middle-aged creepy boy band. And last up as well, don't forget that you can also tap on any video as it's playing back in the gallery in order to turn it into a slow motion clip. 
Those extra frames are just added using AI, hence it can be a little bit shonky at times, but overall generally works pretty surprisingly well. And there you have it, my lovelies. Many dozens of tips and tricks and features to check out here on Samsung's fresh new Galaxy Z Fold 6. Did I miss out your own favourite tips or features or whatever? Well, definitely clear me in as to what our massive twat I am in the comments below and let us know what you would have inserted in there. In the meantime, please do book subscribe, ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Full review definitely coming soon. Cheers!